of video game ninjas. Who pops into your head first? Ryu Hayabusa? Scorpion, maybe? What about this big-headed motherfucker? Or even Mystical Ninja Goemon? Nobody's gonna get that reference. The answers to the question are numerous. The gaming industry has no shortage of nimble ninjas of the night. But me personally, when I think of video game ninjas, I think of this bad motherfucker right here, the protagonist of Mark of the Ninja. And of course I walked into a bar. Now he doesn't ever actually get a name, so for convenience's sake we're just gonna call him Mark, comma, of the ninja from here on out. Mark is the main character of what I consider to be one of the best stealth games ever made, and I'm here today to break down exactly what makes the game design of Mark of the Ninja so goddamn good. And just in time for the remaster too. I mean, seven months late, but that's fine. Consistency and simplicity. If you go through and read Mark of the Ninja's developer commentary, which is something I highly recommend you do if you have any interest at all in game development, you will find a specific entry highlighting the moment when the main designer had an epiphany. What this lead designer realized after countless lackluster playtests was that everything in the game needed to come with feedback to keep things continuously clear to the player so you always know what you can and can't do. This level of player agency is controlled by two key design elements, at least in my opinion, those two elements being consistency and simplicity. Did I hear something? These two elements flow through every aspect of Mark of the Ninja, from the controls to the environment to the AI. Simple, concise rules govern the gameplay here, so let's break down some of these rules real quick to understand why these two principles work so well. The simplest of these rule sets revolves around movement. Because Mark of the Ninja is made up explicitly of sharp lines, mostly rigid 90 degree angles, oh, look at that shit, it's so clean. It's always incredibly easy to, say, leap onto a wall and scurry into a grate. Something that might take, I don't know, three to five seconds in a three dimensional game takes what feels like half a fucking second in Mark once you've nailed down the basic rules of movement. Press against a grate and tap X to enter the grate. Tap down and X while hanging on something to lower the ninja, either onto a chunk of wall below or to transition into a hanging animation. These elegant inputs, up X, down X, press B to grab a body and then immediately tap down B to drop the body through a specific type of floor, these are all actions that in many other games would require multiple complicated inputs and thought processes to execute. Not in Mark of the Ninja though, partially because this game has the advantage of a 2D plane and it fully embraces that format to create an unbeatable sense of fluidity in its movement systems. But elegant movement and easy to manage navigation isn't the only thing the two-dimensional element of the game adds. So when I first picked up this game, I immediately thought to myself, how the hell is this going to be difficult? You can see everything around your character in a 2D game, and that could potentially eliminate some of the best moments in a stealth game. You know, when you're caught by surprise and have to deal with the ensuing fight or flight reaction. If I'm playing a stealth game on a 2D plane, couldn't that very easily... I don't know, defeat the purpose of a stealth game? Well, because the designers of this game are fucking masters of their craft, they came up with a simple, consistent, and awesome solution to this query of mine. Logical limitations, my friends. In Mark of the Ninja, the player's vision is situational in a very logical and straightforward manner, but the easiest way to explain it is just to show it to you. It's so nice to see the moonlight again. We made it to the inner keep. Come on. You see that shit? Do you see that shit? If my main man Mark is in a position where he couldn't logically see certain parts of the environment, those areas will become obscured because you can't fucking see them. This even extends to things like grates and doors. You'll have to pop your head out of them or press against them respectively to actually see what's in the room ahead of you. But sometimes getting pushy with your peekin can leave you unfortunately exposed. This blurred vision system pushes you to navigate the environment further to get a better read on the situation, to try to find a position that better benefits your murderous motives. It's a super subtle, super fucking cool mechanic that adds so much to stealth gameplay. I don't know, maybe it's weird for me to get this hyped over the fact that sometimes the screen gets kind of blurry, but I think this situational vision thing is just a fucking brilliant design decision that adds heaping helpings of tension that would not be there otherwise. It does add a whole new level of difficulty to the experience as well, but that's okay because the difficulty is appropriately balanced out by another equally brilliant mechanic that we'll be discussing very shortly. Back to the main point of discussion though, the simplicity and consistency of Mark of the Ninja's design doesn't only extend to the player's movement or vision, but to the whole game world. Let's talk about the AI, which is probably the most complicated example of these sets of rules. Now, 
the AI here isn't Metal Gear Solid 5 levels of complex, it doesn't adapt to your playstyle over the course of the game or anything crazy like that, but it's deep enough to constantly keep you on edge, as well as reactive enough to keep you coming back for more. Because like in most stealth games, the scenarios and enemy placements can change on a dime if you fuck up even slightly. Oh, uh, side note on the topic of fucking up, it's really nice to play a stealth game with loading times between, say, one and two seconds. I'm so used to getting really into a stealth situation and then doing something incredibly stupid to fuck it all up in half a second, and then I just got a quick load and I got to sit, and I just sit there for like 40 seconds and just consider my own failings. Boy, do I suck at these games. Long loading screens are never something a developer intends or desires, but they often end up feeling like an unintended punishment in stealth games. You fucked up once? Ah, well, sit through this 45 second loading screen then, you dumb asshole. Not with Mark of the Ninja, though. If you get got by one of these weirdly proportioned ass mercenaries and sent to an early grave, you'll be hopping out that pine box and back into the heat of battle in less than two seconds. And it's just so nice. Oh, it's so nice. Now, AI having a set of rules that you learn to take advantage of over the course of the game isn't anything new. That's pretty much the core essence of a stealth game. But Mark of the Ninja excels in this category because, again, simplicity and consistency. Hey. The two essential rules that AI works off of are, one, enemies are attracted to noise. We'll touch on noise very soon, very important. And two, enemies will not be able to see you in the dark, but they can pretty much see you instantly if you're on the same plane as them while not shrouded in darkness. Light and sight lines are expertly communicated through harsh edges that let you know exactly where the light falls. When enemies are passive, they'll emit a small light that indicates their immediate cone of vision, stay away from that shit, and if they're alerted to something, anything out of the ordinary, they'll click on a sharp flashlight that will aim towards whatever they're investigating. So as you can see, very simple tool set of cues and cones to work around. It's pretty basic, but when you combine the AI with badass gadgets and unlockable context-sensitive takedowns, as well as the built-in gameplay elements of situational vision and seat-of-your-pants platforming, a sense of freedom and creative expression with your stealth quickly becomes palpable as fuck. Also, side note, but really nice feature, my main man Mark is black and white in the dark and regains color when he's in the light. Very nice little visual detail, straight into the point, gets the message across instantaneously. In short, to sum up all the shit I just talked about, Mark of the Ninja is a game based around strict, easy to read rules. Every aspect of the game has its own set to abide by, and yet despite the differences in rules between different elements of gameplay, there is one main rule to rule them all. I promise I'll stop saying the word rule after this next segment. Sound cues. I began the first section of this video by discussing a specific moment in Mark of the Ninja's developer commentary, so let's let's go back to that for a second before we get into this next thing. In these few paragraphs, you can read about how the lead designer realized that a clear delineation of gameplay mechanics was the key to it all. Nowhere is this design philosophy more apparent than with Mark of the Ninja's implementation of sound as a visual element. Everything that occurs during MOTN's gameplay emits a sound, represented by a circle that ripples out from the location of said sound. It's your choice to either take advantage of the noise, work around it, or get absolutely fucked by it. I usually end up forced into that last one. Being able to see how far sound travels through these visual cues is integral to success in Mark of the Ninja, and when used in combination with the situational vision we discussed earlier, it can lead to some wonderfully tense situations where you can only vaguely ascertain the locations of enemy troops. These kind of situations perfectly highlight how Mark of the Ninja has translated the best elements of 3D stealth gameplay into the second dimension. Stealth almost always involves some level of guesswork, and this is how Mark does that, with a whip-smart combination of blurring and bubbles. So yeah, as you might have noticed by now, the sound cues and the screen blurring that we focused on in that last segment are inextricably tied together, mechanically. The sound bubbles balance out Mark's situational vision, because if this game didn't have these brilliant little bubbles, then you'd have to play it with fucking like headphones cranked up every time and be like an actual human ninja to get anything done. Case in point, that's basically what New Game Plus mode is, and New Game Plus fucks me to death every time I touch the controller. As we discussed earlier, usually moments like, say, being surprised by an unexpected unmarked soldier in the band paid off, fuck, shoot the face, wouldn't typically be possible within the format of a 2D game, but the lead up to Mark's versions of these moments where you're caught by surprise and have to make split second decisions is greatly enhanced by these visual cues. If you are patient and precise enough, you could play the entire game without sound and use nothing but these little bubbles to get a perfect, 100% ghost run. Contrastingly, much like a silent soldier skulking around a corner waiting for Big Boss's dumb thick cheeks to slide on by, these visual cues are subtle enough to be missed, 
And missing a cue like that can lead to your instantaneous demise, just like it can in MGS5, or Dishonored, or Splinter Cell. Man, I miss those franchises so goddamn much. Through the mechanics that we've discussed, Mark of the Ninja captures the essence of the best 3D stealth games and compartmentalizes that feeling into a two-dimensional game, and it's just fucking genius. Feel the ninja. To finish up this video, I want to pull away from the slightly more technical stuff for a bit to talk about a more basic element of Mark, and that is how this game just makes you feel like a goddamn ninja. We already kind of touched on the controls earlier, but I gotta talk about it some more here because a huge part of what makes any game good to me is concise, snappy controls, and Mark of the Ninja's controls are just mwah, perfection. Jumping, climbing, grappling, gliding, it all feels so responsive, and it's something that really ties the whole experience together. Of course, the aspect of Mark of the Ninja most affected by these elegant movement inputs is the platforming, which is never super complicated, but that's part of what makes it fun. The game is packed with constant little platforming and navigation challenges, and while what you're doing for moments to moment isn't exactly complex, the tight timing windows needed to execute this stuff ends up being a consistent source of satisfaction. Picking a lock in perfect sequence with the approaching motion sensor, dashing to a new hiding spot between two lasers or a group of enemies, dangling to get an angle in, these kinds of micro challenges pervade the level design of Mark of the Ninja to the point where you are always on your toes. I've marked <laughs> the areas where these miniature navigation challenges occur on this one map, and as you can see, this shit is dense. Every couple of seconds, you're thrust into a situation that requires you to think fast or get fucked, and that kind of situational awareness really lends to you being able to get into the role of a quick-witted and agile badass. Much like the aliens from AVP, when you're not killing, you're climbing. And it's a really solid second pillar of gameplay that only enhances the main stealth stuff. Nowhere is Clay's confidence in Mark's movement more apparent than the special challenge rooms of the game, which are, indeed, fucking challenging. I'm not much of a puzzle guy, I, uh... I don't like to think. So these areas gave me some trouble, but man was I ecstatic every time I conquered one. So this game's movement is incredibly important and incredibly well done, as I'm sure you can tell by this point. It's what helps you grasp the feel of the ninja. But what about the feel of your ninja? That sounded like a sex question? It's not. As you progress through this game, you'll steadily unlock a string of fresh digs called paths. And aside from looking ridiculously badass, they also function as gameplay modifiers that add customization and replayability to the game. For example, the Path of the Hunter. You'll probably unlock this getup about halfway through the game, and the main benefit of this outfit is that it auto-completes all the game's QTE stealth takedowns. Seems like a small change, but playing through a level without having to risk botching a takedown and causing a bunch of fucking high-pitched agonized screaming really does change the way you consider your next move. Another more extreme example of these gameplay modifiers is the Path of Silence, which completely eliminates the sword from gameplay, meaning you can't execute any takedowns. This suit is perfect for ghost runs, as it allows you to carry two distraction tools as opposed to the standard loadout of one distraction tool and one offensive tool. This path shit is a, just a really compelling system that offers customization and replayability as a reward for completing challenges and just generally being a grade-A ninja man. In conclusion. I know I bounced between a lot of topics across this video, but I hope by the end of it all I conveyed the breadth of this game's systems, and the way that all of these systems and features interact to create the perfect storm of extraordinary emergent stealth gameplay that is Mark of the Ninja. MOTN is a game in which everything feels considered, and that kind of deliberate, airtight design is the shit that I can't get enough of. God damn it, Arcane, just make another fucking Dishonored game already! Man, I know I always bring up the Clockwork Mansion and the slap in the crag, but that shit, it's just been too long. I need more Dishonored. I need my fix of that buttery smooth, AAA quality, 3D stealth action, truly. Where has all the stealth gone? Stealth as a genre has ironically fucking disappeared over the past few years. Dishonored's dormant, Metal Gear is dead and buried. Shit, the last time we saw Sam Fisher, he was making a fucking Jay and Silent Bob-ass cameo in the least memorable game in Ubisoft's modern catalog, which is fucking saying something! Okay, no, this is not a stealth games rant. At least we still have this murderous cue ball shuffling around, and I, I shouldn't end this video by talking about something completely different. I was talking about Mark of the Ninja. Actually, I guess I'm done talking about Mark of the Ninja.